Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about the last of Newton's laws, which is Newton's third law. Um, and so we've already talked about the first law, which is also called the law of inertia. Um, remember, Newton's first law says that an object at rest remains at rest, or an object in motion remains in motion at constant velocity, unless acted upon by a net force. The second law is net force equals mass times acceleration. That's the only calculation law. Um, the third law is also a conceptual law, just like the first one, and so you won't do a ton of calculations with the third law. Um, but the, again, that still means it's important. Um, Newton's third law is, is responsible for explaining things like, you know, why do you go backwards when you push off against the wall? How do rockets work? How do um, airplanes work? How does a gun re recoil work when you shoot a gun and it goes backwards? And so the third law has to do with things like that. And we also might do some problems that combine Newton's second law and third law. Okay, so first let's take a look at what the third law says. Okay, so here is Newton's third law. And this is the one that most people know by heart. Newton's third law states, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Okay, now it's very easy to say, but let's kind of break down exactly what the implications of the third law are. Are. Every other law is about forces, and so let's think about what does it say about forces. When it says action in the third law, he's talking about forces. And when he talks about a reaction, he's also talking about a reaction force. Okay, so here is how you could rephrase the third law. Okay, if there is a force from object A to object B, there is an equal and opposite force from object B to object A. Okay, that is basically what Newton's third law says. Okay, for every force from object A to object B, there is an equal. Equal in this case just means same size. And opposite means opposite direction, the exact opposite direction. Okay, so an equal and opposite force from object B to object A. Notice that Newton's third law involves two different objects, and you're talking about forces acting on two different objects. And so even though these forces are equal and opposite, there's no cancellation involved um, in those forces because they don't act on the same object. Because some people think, well, if you have equal and opposite forces, wouldn't those cancel out? Okay, well... If you had equal and opposite forces on one single object, then yeah, they would cancel out and then the object, you know, wouldn't move. Um, but in the case of Newton's third law, we're talking about two different objects um, acted upon by two different forces. And so they're the same size and opposite directions, but they don't act on the same object. Okay, so keep that in mind. Okay, so let's start with some basic conceptual um, examples. Okay, so keep Newton's third law in mind. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Okay, so example one says, when you hit a nail with a hammer, the hammer puts a force of 50 newtons on the nail. What does Newton's third law say will happen as a result? Okay, to do problems with the third law, you have to identify, number one, what is the action, and number two, what is the reaction? So the action here, is that the hammer puts 50 newtons on the nail. Now, according to Newton's third law, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Sorry, this is 50 N for Newton. Okay, a force of 50 newtons on the nail. So, the third law says that there will be an equal and opposite reaction meaning that the reaction to this um, situation is that the nail is going to put 50 newtons on the hammer. Okay, so notice with the third law, it's the same two objects that you're focusing on, the, the hammer and the nail. The hammer puts a force on the nail. The nail puts an equal and opposite force back on the hammer. Okay, and so when you bang on a nail, um, not only is the nail like going into the wood or whatever, but you actually feel that 
the um, reaction force on the hammer. And that's one reason why if you hammer for a while, the, the hammer actually gets warm because the nail is actually applying a force up onto the hammer. Okay, so that is just a simple example with Newton's third law. A hammer puts a force on the nail, nail puts an equal and opposite force on the hammer. Okay, so if you write it out like this and you can pay attention to what are the two objects involved, the hammer and the nail, and then it switches to the nail and the hammer, third law problems are very easy. Okay, so that is example one. So pause it there if you need to look at that some more. Okay, so example two. It says an ice skater pushes off from a wall. What does the third law say will happen? Just to kind of draw this, let's say we have like a person, we got ice skates on, and let's say here's a wall. Let's put some here, maybe a smile because they're doing physics. So think about this. The person applies a force into the wall. Do you ever wonder why if you're pushing into the wall, you somehow go backwards? Okay, well that has to do with Newton's third law. So what is the action here? Well, the action is that the skater applies a force to the wall. Okay, focus on the two objects involved here. That is the skater and the wall. Because the third law says, remember the other way of saying the third law, you know, if object A puts a force on object B, object B puts the same force um, back on object A in the opposite direction. So the reaction is, the Newton's third law reaction, is that the wall, that's object B, applies an equal and opposite, remember opposite meaning opposite direction, opposite force to, or yeah, to the skater. So again, same two objects, the skater and the wall. Okay, so that means on the skater, there is an equal and opposite force from the wall pushing them in the opposite direction. And so even though the skater is pushing into the wall, in, uh, to, to the right, they actually feel a force pushing them back to the left. Okay, and again, that's because of Newton's third law. Okay, equal and opposite reactions. Okay, so pause there if you need to look at that some more. Okay, let's do some more examples. Okay, example three. The Earth pulls down on Mr. Walker with a gravitational force of a thousand newtons. What is the third law reaction force in this situation? This is one of those questions that like messes with people. Okay, so the safest way to do this is to write this out. Okay, what is the action? The Earth pulls on Mr. Walker. Actually, let me add a word here. The Earth pulls down on Mr. Walker with 1,000 newtons. Okay, so what is the reaction to the situation? What is the Newton's third law reaction force in this situation? See if you can answer this. Okay, this is the one that always like messes with people's minds. And it's not hard if you figure out the pattern, but some people are kind of resistant to this idea because in their mind it doesn't make any sense. But the reaction is this. Okay, what are the two objects? The Earth and Mr. Walker. So when we do the third law reaction, it should be the same two objects. Okay, the reaction is Mr. Walker pulls up on the earth with a thousand newtons. Why is it up and not down? Because equal and opposite. 
is so the opposite meaning opposite direction the earth pulls down on mr walker mr walker pulls up on the earth same two objects okay and now you might say well how do you pull up on the earth well the same way the earth pulls down on you you don't think it's strange that the earth somehow pulls down on you without like physically touching you i mean it, it's the same thing it's gravity okay gra the earth uses its gravity to pull you down your body also has a gravitational force and so your body pulls up on the earth now the earth is so much bigger than you that the earth doesn't actually move and so if you jump off the roof you go down towards the ground the ground doesn't really move okay just because the earth is so much more massive than you All right but let's say if if you were the size of the moon if you were falling t towards the earth the earth would also fall up towards you and then you would collide in between okay so that is the third law of reaction for the situation okay it's not the the ground pushing you up it's mr walker pulls up on the earth with a thousand newtons and again that force comes from gravity all right, pause there if you need to look at that some more. Okay, so example four. Identify how a rocket ship moves using Newton's third law. Okay, so I, I found a picture to help us answer this question. But basically, here's how a rocket ship works. Okay, the at the back of the rocket, the rocket expels what's called exhaust. Okay, exhaust is basically really hot gas particles. Okay, it pushes the gas particles out the back of the rocket. Okay, that means the rocket applies a force to that exhaust. Okay, those gas particles. The gas particles apply an equal and opposite force on the rocket. Okay, making it go forward. You could do the same thing with like a fire extinguisher. If you imagine like a fire extinguisher, um, you know, if you point the fire extinguisher one way and you sit on on a rolly chair, then you would go backwards. That's basically how a rocket engine works. Okay, you you apply force on the gas one way, the gas applies the equal and opposite force on you in the opposite direction, and so the exhaust goes back and you go forward. Okay, so the I would to answer this question, I would say the rocket applies a force to the high speed gas particles aka the exhaust out the back of the rocket if you ever like watch a rocket take off it looks like there's fire coming out of the bottom that's not actually fire that's what i mean by exhaust okay it, it, it looks like it's like really hot and it, on fire and it is really hot but that's just because those gas particles have a lot of energy and they're moving really fast okay so that's not fire coming out the bottom of a rocket that's that exhaust Okay, that's those high-speed gas particles. So the rocket applies a force to the exhaust at the back of the rocket. The gas particles apply an equal and opposite force on the rocket, making it go up. A common misconception people have about how rockets work is they think rockets push off the ground or push off of the air. and That's not how a rocket works. Okay, it's basically recoil. Okay, you, you fire something one way and you go the opposite way. Okay, so you could also say the same thing about gun recoil. If you shoot a gun, okay, the gun puts a force on a bullet. The bullet puts an equal and opposite force back on the gun. So the bullet goes one way and the gun goes backwards towards your face. Okay, and that's basically the same way a rocket works. It's called recoil. And that's because of Newton's third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Okay, so pause there. And make sure you understand uh, that explanation. Okay, so I just want to talk about one or two more things. Um, you can theoretically uh, combine Newton's second law and Newton's third law, and I'll see you, or I'll show you how that works. Remember, the second law is basically net force equals mass times acceleration. And also remember that two objects interacting are going to put equal and opposite forces on each other. Here is the key concept. And I put it in bold so you make sure you focus on this. The forces between two objects interacting are equal and opposite. But that doesn't mean 
that the same thing is going to happen to both objects. Okay, the forces are equal and opposite, but if one of the objects has a bigger mass and one has a smaller mass, the object with the smaller mass is going to experience a larger acceleration. Okay, so don't confuse equal and opposite forces with the same thing happening. Let me give you an example of that key concept. Let's say you fire a gun. Okay, th think about the, the, the mass of a gun and the mass of a bullet. The bullet is really small. So when you fire a bullet out of a gun, the gun puts a force on the bullet. The bullet puts an equal and opposite force on the gun. Okay, but that same force on the bullet, because the bullet has a small mass, the bullet has a much bigger acceleration. Because remember, F net equals MA. Okay, so you could have a net force, you could have a small mass and a big acceleration, or with the same force, you could have a big mass and a small acceleration and get the same net force either way. Okay, so that's why the gun, um, when it recoils, it goes back, but it doesn't go as fast as the bullet does because the gun has a lot more mass than the bullet. Okay, so that is the key concept to what we're about to talk about. Okay, so just do a quick example. I don't know if I want to do all of these. Let's do this one. All right, so there's a man stuck in the center of an ice pond, and he tries to make it to shore by throwing his shoes away, um, he, by throwing his shoes out into the air so he can get back to the shore. So let's say here's a man. Let's say here's the shore over here he's standing on the ice pond what he's going to do is he's going to take his shoes and he's going to throw his shoes that way and what's going to happen is he's going to put a force on his shoes to the left the shoes are going to put an equal and opposite force on his body to the right and so the man is going to go back towards the shore which is over here Okay, so the first question says, what is the third law reaction force? Okay, the man throws his shoes with a force of 50 newtons. So that means the reaction force would be the shoes put a 50 newton force on the man. That's it. Now, does that mean they both go back with the same speed or the same acceleration? No. Okay, they have equal and opposite forces, but that doesn't mean the same outcome happens. So let's focus on these shoes. Okay, F net equals MA. That's Newton's second law. Okay, so now we're combining the second law and the third law. For the shoes, if we do F net equals MA, the force is 50 newtons. What is the mass of the shoes? Two kilograms. So the acceleration would be 50 divided by 2, which is 25 meters per second squared. What about for the man? Okay, for the man, remember the force is equal and opposite. So the force of the man is also 50 newtons. But the man has a mass of 100 kilograms and not 2 kilograms. So for the man, even though the force is the same, it's still 50 newtons. Actually, technically speaking, this one should be negative because it's to the left, and this one should be positive because it's to the right. Um, but the man has a mass of 100, and so the acceleration for the man should actually be 50 divided by 100, which is 0 0.5 meters per second squared. Okay, so if you had a question saying, you know, which one had the bigger force, they both had the same force because of the third law. But if you had a question that asked, you know, which one has a bigger acceleration, the shoes have a bigger acceleration because they have less mass. Okay, so that's the type of problem that you see where you combine Newton's second law and the third law. Okay, so just think forces are equal and opposite. That doesn't mean everything is equal and opposite. Okay, so pause it there if you need to look at that some more.
Okay, so see if you can answer example 7 on your own. It says a 1,000 kilogram cannon fires a 50 kilogram cannonball with a force of 2,500 newtons. You don't have to do any calculations. Okay, you should be able to answer this, both of these questions without any calculations. So first question says, which is greater, the force from the cannon on the cannonball or the force from the cannonball on the cannon? The second question says, which is greater, the acceleration of the cannonball or the acceleration of the cannon? So see if you can answer those two questions. Okay, so that is it to Newton's third law. If it seems pretty simple, uh, which hopefully it does, that's because the third law is simple. As long as you keep in mind what are the two objects involved and make sure you understand it's equal and opposite forces. Okay, not equal and opposite outcomes, equal and opposite forces. Okay, and the forces don't cancel because they act on two different objects. I'm going to link some videos in um, that are extra videos for you to watch about Newton's third law. As always, please let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you guys in the next video.